right, all right. Pizza time. Ah. My friends, you need an oven. And if you're someone who likes to host parties and bake meals for your friends and family, you need a clean oven. <laughs> Do you think you're the only one that's gonna be in that kitchen? The answer is absolutely not. There are 15 other house guests <laughs> sniffing around to see what you got baking in the kitchen. It's a jungle out there, and those hungry bellies are coming, my friend. The last thing you want is a filthy oven stinking up your kitchen and possibly other parts of the house, or even worse, older recipes still in the oven, altering the flavor of your food. How's that food tasting? Well, now I know how good you are at cooking food that's bad. Well, the good news is that it is my job to help take your oven cleaning game from like a four to a 14 and a half. And so today, I'm gonna show you how to clean your oven in three simple steps. Before we get into the actual cleaning, I know there's some of you that may be asking, well, I have a self-clean oven, can I just use the self-clean feature? Straight up, the answer is absolutely not. Stay away from it. I'll get more into that at the end of this video. Moving right along with the cleaning, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a can of Easy Off. They have a blue can and they have a yellow can. Make sure that you buy the blue can. They both work well, but the blue can is fume free. So it's very, very nice. You're not gonna be smelling a bunch of chemicals and giving yourself a headache. I should mention that you should only have to do this process one time because after we're done here, I'm gonna show you how to maintain your oven and keep it clean from here on out. So let us commence. Surprise, I've got a hat. So for step number one, what we wanna do is open up our oven we want to remove the oven racks, take them outside, and set them up maybe against some, some rocks, some concrete. Um, you're going to take your easy off, and then you're going to spray them really, really well. Flip them over, and spray the other side really, really well with your easy off. So remove those oven racks, and do that. That's step number one. Okay, in step number two, we spread our racks. Now we need to spray our oven very liberally with our Easy Off. Spray the bottom, the back, the sides, and your door. So here we go. Okay, now that we have everything sprayed, we have our rack sprayed, we have all of our inside of our oven sprayed. Now, just let the cleaner sit and work. Don't fool with it. Let it sit all night long. So, say one evening, spray everything about 6 p.m., and then let it sit all night long, and don't fool with it until, let's say, around 10 a.m. the next morning. And this will conclude step two. Okay, moving right along to step number three. You guessed it. It's just clean out the oven, clean out the oven racks, wipe them off. Our oven cleaner has set all night long. Now, we just take, like, some paper towels here and we're gonna wipe everything out and all the grease and charred food and gunk will come right off. You'll be amazed, you'll love it. To finish this step, grab you a cloth with some Dawn dish soap and we're gonna basically wash out, I guess you could say, uh, the oven here to make sure there's no excess chemical left in this oven. We don't want to leave any kind of chemical behind. There shouldn't be a lot, but just for safe measure, you always want to do this when you're finished. And um, so we'll put some Dawn dish soap on here with this cloth, and we'll take this to the sink. We'll rinse it out and just wipe this out real good. You're gonna do that with your, you know, your whole oven. That concludes step three. 
The oven is clean now. Do the same thing to the oven racks. Just hose them down outside or take them to the tub and rinse them off and then put them back inside. And bonus step number four, maintain your oven now that it's cleaned. What you wanna do is you wanna start using oven liners. Oven liners are oven sized liners that fit right there on the bottom, the floor of the oven, and they're made of silicone. And the way they work is they just sit there during your baking process and they catch any grease, any drippings that come from pies, whatever you're baking in your oven. They catch it and then once your oven is cool, from time to time, just pull out your liners, take them over to the sink, or trash can, hold them over the top of the trash can, and you bend them, and then that dried food just pops right off. From that point, you can stick them in your dishwasher with your dishes, they're entirely dishwasher safe. A lot of people use aluminum foil on the bottom of their ovens. Personally, I don't recommend that. Depending on what you believe and who you talk to, aluminum foil is actually bad for your health. It's bad for your health just to have it in there baking with it all the time. So instead, go with the silicone liners. I will leave a link down in the video description box to those silicone liners so you can check them out for yourself. Before I end this video, as I promised, let's talk about the self-clean feature. I don't recommend the self-clean feature whatsoever for a couple reasons. Number one is the way it works is with heat. It heats up the oven to about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. I want you to think about that for a minute. A thousand degrees. Fahrenheit. It's this little box in your kitchen that's a thousand degrees. If you're not careful, in my opinion, if it's not properly ventilated, you can burn down your entire house. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons I don't recommend the self-clean feature. The second reason I don't recommend using the self-clean feature is it's very taxing on that heating element. The heating element is designed to bring the temperature in the oven up to around 325, 450 on its regular uses, but when you're using the self-clean feature, that heating element is taxed to its limits to bring the temperature up to a thousand degrees, and what happens a lot of the times is the thing just goes out after you're done. So what happens is, yeah, you've got a clean oven that doesn't work anymore. You have to replace that heating element. Now, the heating element itself is not that expensive, you know, 20, 40 bucks, but you gotta pay someone to install it, you gotta pay them to come out to your house, you gotta set the appointment, and a lot of times it costs more to replace that than it does just to buy a new oven altogether. The third reason I don't recommend using the self-clean feature is just the fumes that come from that oven during the process are extremely strong. If you've ever used it before and you walk into the kitchen, then you, you, you've experienced your sinuses, your nose starts to run, your eyes start to burn, and if you have asthma or respiratory issues, it could they could cause some problems. Also, studies have been shown that the charred on and the baked on food that you find in the bottom of the oven, once it's activated and actually starts to burn, actually produces small amounts of carbon monoxide. Now if you don't know anything about carbon monoxide, it's an odorless, deadly gas that in large amounts can actually kill you. So I can't imagine in small amounts what it's actually doing to your body. So I just say avoid the self-clean feature at all costs. That's it. That's how to clean your oven. Implement the steps that I've shown you in this video. Spray your oven down, let it sit overnight, wipe it out in the morning, use your liners, and your oven is going to be fresh. And scream perfection.